called string control. String control, okay? Understanding that when you strum th something that is not part of the chord, it tends to get a little bit ugly or noisy, okay? Now that can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. We're gonna talk about the bad part of it right now. So when I'm making this G chord, I can strum everybody. <laughs> And I like the freedom of being able to move my arm and just kind of bash those strings making this rhythm, okay? So when I move to this C add nine, when I move down to C add nine like this, what I'm gonna do is take the, the uh, fingernail part, the, the tip of my finger, and I'm gonna lightly touch the sixth string, which now kills that sixth string. So when I'm strumming, I'm not trying to hit the sixth string, but if I do accidentally hit the sixth string, you're not gonna hear it. See right there, I'm actually strumming the sixth string, but instead of getting this sound, which again, I'm not saying can be a bad thing. You might like that and wanna use it somewhere and that's awesome. But right now, my goal is to avoid the sound of the sixth string. So I deaden it out. Now there is a, a noise to it, but you're not gonna hear that when I'm strumming the entire chord. And that still gives me the freedom to kind of beat the daylights out of my guitar as I'm strumming and get the kind of sound that I want. Now D. D on the other hand, I have to be a little more careful. Um, I can't deaden out this fifth string. Okay. I can deaden out the sixth string with my thumb up here, but I can't really do much about the fifth string. Now, I've seen some people that have really long fingers that can deaden out all, all, both of these strings on the top. I cannot do that, my fingers are too short. So I just have to be careful not to strum the fifth string, okay? Now, reality check. When you are strumming the guitar, you will hit too many strings sometimes, you will hit too few strings sometimes, and you'll hit the right amount sometimes. That's being a human being. It doesn't matter who it is. I don't care if you're Eric Clapton or Steve Vai or anybody in between, you're gonna do that. You're gonna hit too many strings sometimes, too few strings sometimes, and the right amount sometimes. Don't worry about it. There's a difference between hitting too few or too many sometimes and doing it all of the time. So when I'm strumming a D chord, if I'm really feeling it, I might hit the fifth string by accident. <laughs> And it's not gonna sound horrible, it'll sound fine. Even if I hit all six of them. It's a little bit uglier, right? And I don't wanna do that on a regular basis because it's just too much. But there's a realistic element of guitar playing that I need you to always be thinking about, okay? And that is, we've got these lines, we've got these rules, right? We're supposed to do this, we make the chord this way, we strum these strings, all these sorts of things. But there's a realistic element that happens when you're playing guitar um, where things are organic and they're changing a little bit. That's why sometimes when you look at tablature, when you're learning how to play a song by tablature, tablature sometimes can be ridiculously difficult to play because whoever tabbed it out was being way too anal retentive about the way the artist played it. And I always use this as an example. If you had Jimi Hendrix in the studio, and he played Little Wing 10 times, and they recorded it 10 times, how many of those times would be exactly, exactly, exactly the same? And the answer, of course, you know the answer, the answer is none of them would be exactly the same. They'd all be a little different from each other. That's the element of realistic music making. Okay, so when we look at a song, now don't get me wrong, some songs have elements that we try and replicate to an exactness because the song requires it or we choose to have it that way, but there are many elements of guitar playing that are relative to naturalism or an organic element. So, and I don't wanna go off on this forever, I just want you to understand when you're strumming, if you strum a D chord and you hit too many strings, don't go, oh my gosh, I can't do that. And oh, you know, I'm a terrible player. We all do it. Every guitar player does it. So when I'm gonna hit this D chord, what I'm thinking about in my head 
I have basically three regions on my guitar. I have the thick strings, the middle strings, and the thin strings. That's what I got. That's how I think about it in my head. Thick strings, uh, middle strings, and then thin strings. So when I'm playing a D chord, I'm directing my guitar pick towards the thin strings, knowing that it's okay to hit the middle strings. What I am trying to avoid are the thick strings. It doesn't mean I'm not going to hit them ever, but it means I'm trying to avoid those. So in my head, I'm directing my guitar pick towards the thin strings. Which means I'm hitting the thin strings and some middle strings. On a C chord, I might be directing towards the middle strings. Which means I'm going to hit some thin strings, I'm going to hit some thick strings, but my, my main goal is to hit the center. When I'm strumming a G chord, okay, I'm strumming the whole entire thing, but my emphasis certainly is going to be on the thick strings as well. That's where my beef is going to come from. Right? Now again, keeping in mind that I can, when I'm making the C chord, I can deaden out that sixth string with the, the, uh, the tip of my ring finger so it won't make sound, so I can get a little more aggressive on the thicker strings up here. And this is what I'm thinking about when I'm playing. Now, again, I've been doing this for so long that after a while I don't really think about it much anymore. It's just happening by automation, which is what I want to happen to you as well in your playing, okay? But this whole thing of like going... and trying to be all careful and stuff like that, don't do that. Okay, you got to have some fun with your strum. You've got to allow that guitar pick to strike those strings and get through those. Okay, so there's some fifth string going on in there. I'm not trying to hit it, but if I accidentally hit it, I'm unapologetic about it. It's perfectly fine. I am deadening out the sixth string here with my thumb because I really don't want to hit that and I'm not really strumming high enough to hit it anyway. Because again, I'm directing my strum towards the thin strings. If I would hit less than four strings on a D chord, right there, it's okay. Again, it's going to be creating another element that we're going to be talking about really soon anyway, um, which has to do with dynamics. But that's, that's what I want you to think about. Okay, so you've got these chords. You've got these 10 chords that you're working on, and you're working on various techniques to, to develop those chords. And again, it could be any chord that you want. I don't care what chords you're studying. You could be way beyond these 10 chords, and you're studying other chords, and that's awesome. You're still going to want to focus on bouncing on lifting and shifting and being aware of any finger pivots that you might have in there and then developing control of both the strings deadening out the things that you don't want when possible and directive strumming which is trying to hit the, the thicker strings or the middle strings or the thinner strings directing your guitar pick towards those elements and being unapologetic when you do hit too many or too few on occasion, because it's human, it, it, it happens. So think about that, and all of a sudden you're gonna start finding that your guitar playing is gonna sound more realistic when you play. I always use the word professional. Professional to me doesn't mean you're making money at guitar playing or something like that, or you're touring the world. Professional means when you play, people listen to it and they go, that's authentic, it's real. They don't go, Oh, I hear he's practicing and he's getting better. Or I hear she's getting better at her guitar playing. It's not that. It's that when you play, people just want to listen. That's professionalism to me. Okay? And that professional comes professionalism comes from controlling the strings, being really confident with whatever chords it is that you're working on, and developing an ability to be able to hit the proper strings. Now, we're going to talk about strumming and all that stuff in the near future here as well.